This is Access Port County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the May 2nd meeting of the Michigan City Board of Public Works and Safety. You can find more information for this meeting at www.accesslaportcounty.org. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call a meeting of the Michigan City Board of Public Works and Safety to order the second day of May, 2022. Present are Mayor Dwayne Perry, Mr. Michael Vinson, and myself, Virginia Keating. We have a quorum. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the uh, April 18th meeting. We're going to defer that until the next meeting. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a request for street closure. John Stimley Zoological <laughs> Society is requesting to hold their annual running well for Washington Park Zoo 5K on Sunday, July 10th, 2022, starting at 9 a.m., at the zoo down Lakeshore Drive to Center Street, down Oming Street, and back to the zoo. Good morning. Good morning, Captain Jeff Lineski, Traffic Division. Uh, I did speak with Mr. Stimley last week. This is going to be the same route, same starting time as last year and all the previous years. We've never experienced any problems, and we would recommend approval. Thank you. Are there any public comments? Any board comments? Then I'll entertain a motion. We just need the motion subject to the certificate of insurance. Okay. <sighs> I'll make a motion to approve, subject to the submittal of a acceptable certificate. I'll second. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is a request for a four way stop. William Goose 301 West Cold Spring Avenue is requesting stop signs to be placed on Cold Spring Avenue at Hoyt Street, along with placing speed limit signs on Cold Spring Avenue. Anyone here to speak to this matter? Captain? Yes, uh, I looked into this by first pulling the accident stats for that, this intersection for the last um, five years. In that five years, we've had eight accidents at that intersection. Uh, six of those, I'm sorry, uh, we've had three accidents and uh, only one of those was caused by a driver that was failing to yield the right of way to the stop signs that are already there. Um, I also looked at the sight lines for that intersection. Uh, the sight lines are perfectly clear. There's no obstructions that would cause anybody any problems trying to pull out of the cross street at that intersection. Uh, therefore, we would recommend against the approval of this four-way stop. I think the two-way stop at that intersection is working correctly as it is, and we will continue to monitor it. Thank you. Are there any public comments? Any board comments? Uh, I have one, Madam President. I would uh, certainly not say anything about Captain Lineski's research because it's always impeccable. I, I just have one concern. Um, the next stop sign, I think, is at the intersection of Earl Road in Cool Spring, and then going east, it's at uh, Wabash in, in Cool Spring. So uh, as far as distance goes, I don't see any, any need there. But I'm wondering in that neighborhood if there's not a, a sizable population of young children that might be, might be crossing the road to catch a school bus or crossing the road in that area. I, I, just, I just don't know. That's a, that's a thought that popped into my mind. And there's probably very extremely difficult to, to determine that without just camping out there and watching a daily activity. Yes, I, I travel that way quite a bit. I haven't noticed a lot of pedestrian traffic uh, during the school hours. Um, uh, most of the children nowadays ride buses, so there isn't a lot of pedestrian uh, traffic at uh, a lot of these okay. schools. So I, I just haven't noticed any problems with the pedestrians that would warrant the need for a four-way stop there. Well, that's good enough for me, Captain. Thank you. Captain, I'd like to ask about the speed limit signs or adequate speed limit notification. Um, I believe we probably could put some in there. Um, the law does not require a speed limit sign at every intersection or every um, entrance into our roadway. However, um, I would not be opposed to putting 30 mile an hour speed limit signs at both ends. So we would could put one at the intersection of Wabash and Cool Spring, and then one at Earl and Cool Spring. Thank you. Okay, that being said, then do I have a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion to disapprove this request. Anything about stop? Well, I was going to ask uh, Ms. LePage Talbrink, do we do we need another submittal for stop signs? Yes. Okay, we'll have to. You can do that. it all under one motion if you'd like. 
Oh, the, the okay. speed, speed limit, limit signs. Speed All right, limit. then I will make a motion for to install the recommended speed limit signs. Thank you. I'll second. And I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. And Chair Rosa as well. The next item on the agenda is a request for uniform policy change. Chief Doug Legal, Michigan City Fire Department, is requesting approval to update their uniform policy, and this will be uh, as amended. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct. Um, double go, Michigan City Fire. Um, we found one little mistake on our part under 1.13 warm weather uniforms. It needs to state from April 1st through October 31st. So that's the only amendment that I would ask for. Okay. What does it currently say, Chief? Uh, we put in there November 1st. The, the problem, uh, Mayor, is we have a cutoff from warm weather to cold weather, and we overlapped it by one day. We needed it. They both say November 1st. So we need to change the one to October 31st. So it's just a minor, very minor little mistake. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any public comments? Board comments? Done here. Then do I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve pending the correction of the date. Second. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for street closure. John Kramer, HRP Construction, is requesting a street closure from Highway uh, 212 down Friar Road to through traffic to Muir Road to install a permanent culvert on Friar Road. And this is for a contract with the Michigan City Sanitation Department, I believe. And this closing is to be for five days. Is there anyone here who wants to address it? We should be on Zoom because I talked on this morning. Is there anyone there wishing to address this matter of a street closure? Yeah, we're coming up on this one. Good morning, Mr. Kramer. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Go ahead now. Uh, uh, state your name and address, please. John Kramer, HRP Construction, 5777 Cleveland Road, South Bend, Indiana. Thank you. Why don't you explain your request? Uh, the Michigan uh, City Sanitation District awarded us a contract this uh, spring to provide a ditch clearing off of Friar Road off uh, for White Ditch. In that contract, we have to install a permanent culvert crossing White Ditch on the uh, south side of Friar Road. Our work would uh, not affect the roadway, but to uh, install the culvert, we would need to uh, or have an excavator track on Friar Road and uh, the road is too small to allow flagging to occur while our work is being uh, done. So uh, we're asking to close the road temporarily and uh, set up a detour route along the construction project so we can uh, divert traffic around our job site. Thank you. Captain Lineski, have you taken a look at this? Uh, yes, I have. Our only concern is uh, I was contacted last week by NDOT. Uh, they're going to be const beginning construction on State Route 212 this week. I think they've already started this morning. 
Um, there's going to be two separate sections that are going to be completely closed uh, one at a time. The first would be uh, 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 an area between Michigan Boulevard and Warnke Road. They're replacing a culvert under State Road 212. That's scheduled to be completed by approximately June 6th. When that is reopened, then they're going to close another section of State Road 212, approximately between Springland Ave and Friar Road, uh, and that would last until June 28th. And then there'll be intermittent construction occurring on the on the bridge over the Nickty tracks, and that'll be ongoing throughout the summer. Uh, our only concern that uh, we would be reluctant to see Friar Road closed during the closure of State Road 212 because Friar will be used uh, as an unofficial detour. When the state closes a state road, they detour all traffic to state highways. But as we all know, people don't use those those roads; they use local roads. So we would just ask that the construction company work with uh, INDOT to assure that Friar Road isn't closed at the same time 212 is closed. Thank you. Mr. Kramer, did you hear that? I did, yes. Okay, um, and will you indeed work with INDOT? Yes, do you know who the, is INDOT performing that work or are they contracting that out? I'm not aware of that. I was con contacted by INDOT engineers, so I would have to get that in for you. Do you have that contact information? Yes. You? Yes. Okay. Perhaps sharing. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Kramer, one last thing. Uh, when is this expected to take place? What uh, are your plans? Our plan is to uh, start the work uh, potentially Please. next week and uh, finishing the following. Thank you. Do I have any public comment? Board comment. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I have a, a quite a uh, high level of concern about this because I, I'm, I'm glad uh, Captain Lunescu is able to elaborate on this. He had more information than I had about the uh, Indiana Department of Transportation crossing projects, uh, roughly one month apiece. They're doing this despite our objection here in Michigan City, which, which concerns me. So please, uh, Mr. Kramer, if you would uh, coordinate with the uh, Captain Lineska with NDOT through Captain Lineski. And if you have any issues, please call my office because we're, we're quite concerned about all of the detours that are going to take place this summer around Michigan City. More than, far more than we're comfortable with. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then I'll call for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is the application for additional employees. Ron Landru, a slice of heaven, 425 Ogden Avenue, is requesting approval to add two additional employees to his food truck located in the parking lot of Brands Old Fashioned Feed Store, US Highway 12. <laughs> does, does he have to do this? <laughs> Morning. Good morning. Uh, Ron Landru, 425 Ogden Ave, Michigan City. Thank you. Why don't you explain what you're asking? Uh, just expecting a busy summer and, and looking to bring in a couple extra people to help us out so we can keep up. Okay. Do you anticipate that you're going to be back with additional employees during the year? I'm hoping not. I, if, if, well, one of these is my granddaughter, so and she's worked with me before in, in the past, so I think she'll be okay if, if the other guy works out. I, I think that uh, should be enough to cover us. Thank you. I hope. Thank you very much. Um, any public comments? Any board comments? None here. We appreciate you asking us. And do I hear a motion? I make a motion. We approve. Support. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a request for street closure. Michigan City Water Department is requesting a street closure on Michigan Boulevard, eastbound lanes from Jackson Street, East Michigan Boulevard, south to East Barker Avenue, then turning east to South Woodland Avenue, then turning north to East Michigan Boulevard on May 10th, 2022 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Good morning, Dave Paul, Distribution Superintendent, Michigan City Waterworks. Um, the reason for this is the aging in infrastructure on Michigan Boulevard. We were doing some 
valve repairs at Jackson in Michigan. And you turn these valves a lot and with main brakes and stuff during the, the winter, the valves break. They were, a lot of them valves were put in, in the early 60s when Michigan Boulevard was widened. So they're in need. Now, now we've got two broken valves. We're actually fixing, repairing those, replacing those today. That is not for the street closure. We have a service valve at 1513 Michigan. It's a little resale shop on the corner of Dixon in Michigan across the old uh, plaza there. And that valve is in the middle. We have to shut both lanes down to get that done. So it's old. The infrastructure is old. And so, and the reason why we went Jackson to Barker and then to Woodland, semi-traffic, I didn't want them cutting in all those side streets. So when you get to Barker, you're open, you get to Woodland Ave, and then you're back on the boulevard. We'll have all detour signs at every intersection. Uh, there'll be major signs at previous to Jackson and at Jackson, total barricade, total barrel off, arrow boards, you know, so it'll be, it, it, we, we do stuff right. We don't want to get anybody get hurt, so. Thank you, thank you. Um, is there any public comment? <clears throat> Just for clarification, Madam Chair, you're, you're not going to close any portion of the boulevard, right? You're going yes. to start at Jackson well, and go south. Okay. Yeah, we're going to close at Jackson, right? Then you're going to, that's where the detour will start. You'll head south. We'll have the, the on Jackson. The, yeah, we'll have it closed between Jackson and Dixon. It's in between. It's in the middle of the block. So those two, I call them eastbound lanes, I guess. Southeastbound lanes. So the detour, the, the detour routes will be Jackson and East East Parker. Yep, to Woodland and then South Woodland back to the Boulevard. Madam, and it, go ahead. But it should be, it's, we, we, we put the, the extra time from 9 a.m. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in case we run into a problem. This is stuff we do all the time. It shouldn't be a problem, but if something comes up, it gives us a little leeway, you know, for the opening. But the road will be all maintained, taken, put back the way it was. And then when blacktopping season starts, we will blacktop that also. Permanent. The road be closed at the end of each, will the road be open at the end of each workday? Or? Yeah, it's just going to be one every one day. Okay. May 10th from nine to three. Okay. With what I think, what I think I put in there, Gail, is a rain date of the 11th. If we get some bad weather, but I put that in just, so we have a, a day if something happens. So. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, my only concern is semi-traffic through the residential district. And I've seen drivers do some tricky maneuvers, but making those turns, kind of an investigation have you done about how wide those intersections are? I know that I think the Jackson Street right away is, is a 60 feet right away, which is you're talking, you know, outside the roadway. The road is probably, I want to say, 50 feet right away. I mean, that was my best alternative to do it that way instead of running them back and then two dicks and maybe in back Elk Street, those little side streets. I didn't want to go in there. I figured I had them all the way down to Barker, come back to Woodland. We're closing one westbound lane utilizing no we're closing both east no but i mean oh. in lieu of detouring through residential to close a westbound lane making that just one lane each way for the day uh we'll be in the two eastbound lanes correct both yes but you have two lanes running west yeah those will be open yes going but, towards the lake but in lieu yes. of closing residential one westbound lane continue to be westbound and then one westbound lane for the temporary shutdown to be eastbound. We we could, we've done, done we, yeah. Yeah, that's the whole thing is we've tried that before. We've tried it on Franklin Street. People don't like, you You understand, people don't like to cooperate. I've had arrow boards hit. I've had cones, barrels run over. You know, we barrel it off, but people are like, well, I go this way every day. I have to go this way. So, I mean, I can still, I mean, we got a week, I can look into that. I mean, but the way I figure we do it is that way. Come, I, I understand what your concern is around run through the, with the, especially with the semi-traffic. So, I mean, we've done this before and we're, like I said, we, we, we use a lot of signage. We use a lot of everything, detour signs, everything. So. Captain Lineski, do you want to chime in on this? Uh, I tend to agree with the 
the possibility that we might want to use uh, the other side of Michigan Boulevard and direct one lane in each direction in the westbound lanes. Um, I know Jackson Street is very tight. Uh, even if there's only one car coming through there, you have to stop and let that car pass because there's only parking on one side of the road because the street is so narrow. So that would be my recommendations, possibly try to move them over into the westbound lanes, or if we have to use Poplar Street as a detour, um, Poplar Street is a little wider than Jackson Street. I, I don't think Jackson Street is going to work because it's just too narrow. So we, I, don't, I don't have a problem with doing it. We would just bring them over, split that, split that northbound lane, I guess, into, into, into each way, right? Away. I don't have a problem doing that. We have enough barrels, we have enough signs, we have enough everything, cones, you know, what we need. Yeah. We have an airport that go. So if it's all right, I'll work with the uh, water department to make sure that we get the right thank detour set up. That's great. Thank you. Um, any other comments? No, thank you. Okay, yeah. then I that does work. Make a motion we approve the closing of Michigan Boulevard and investigate with Captain Lewis Nesky and Dave Paul with the proper detour route around that. I support that. Then I'll call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Jensen. Aye. Chair both sides. The next item on the Aye. agenda is a request to purchase city-owned property. John Kelly Newcomb Uplift and Restore CDC is requesting purchase to purchase the old police annex station building and the property it resides on at 204 Willard Avenue, parcel number 46-01-29-35-3. Three zero dash four zero dash zero 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 dash two two. And when you hear the addresses, please state your name and address. Uh, my name is uh, Kelly Newcomb. My address is two sixteen Taylor Street, Michigan City, Indiana. Thank you. Explain what your request is. Uh, the request is, is that we would like to, uh, I would uh, like to purchase on behalf of, of Uplift and Restore CDC, um, the old uh, police um, building on Willard. We've, uh, we own the, in the, in the process of uh, completing, owning two lots down the street on 7th and Willard and plan to live in the community. Um, uh, my uh, partner who I'm working with, with the CDC, has met with the pastors in that area uh, and also met with city councilmen, including Michael Mack. There's a letter there from Michael Mack. Uh, our intention is, is to sit down with the neighborhood and talk about what kind of use they, what kind of needs do they have in the community and, and, and utilize that building for what those uses would be, sp speaking directly with the community and finding out um, from them. Thank you. Uh, Amber, would you uh, reiterate the policy for the sale of city owned property, please? Um, so, what this board <clears throat> would do would be to refer it to my office and to have me. I, my first step is always the planning department that I check with. Um, and if they give it the clearance, then I go to the other departments and seek feedback. Um, but I do have one question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not familiar with Uplift and Restore. Is, is that a 501c3 or is that a private? It's entity? a 501c3. Yeah, right. Okay. And we're, we've been working with, we just had a meeting with Clarence. Um, it's it's something that we've just started this year. I can give you all the detail and information on that. Also talk about some of the programs that we've got in place uh, that we're working on, um, which is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't come here for a presentation, but I'd love to give you guys a presentation because we're excited about, you know, helping the community. Thank you. That bit of information helps me. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any public comments? Uh, yes, this is Tommy Klavik from 1316 Ohio Street. I hope you let him buy that property. It's been a real eyesore on the community for a long time now. The police have pulled out that way back in the 90s when I think when Gene Simmons was still the police chief. So I hope we get that taken care of. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, any board comments? No, here, Madam Chair. And do I hear a motion? Well, motion to proceed. Uh, it would be a motion to refer it to my office so that I could double check with planning department. And then if planning gives it the clearance, then I go to the other city departments for their feedback. That's 
Attorney LePage took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> That's my motion. I'll second. Okay, then I'll call to the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair Bill as well. Thank you for appearing. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is a request for signage. Brad Minnick, Primera Engineers Limited, is requesting a temporary four way stop sign at the intersection of Franklin and Green Street and 10th and Washington Street to be removed upon completion of the reconstruction of Franklin Street and 11th Street for the NICTI double track project and install permanent four way stop signs at Pine Street and 10th Street. Good morning, Brad. Good morning, Brad Minnick, Premier Engineers, 5281 Fountain Drive, Crown Point. Um, as you said, these signage requests are in conjunction with the NICTI project. Um, two of them are temporary and one of them's uh, permanent, the last being Pine, Pine and 10th Street. So any questions about that? Um, Captain, did you want to chime in on this? Yes, I've been working with Mr. Minnick on this. Um, just late last week, we had a pretty serious action at, at the intersection of 10th and Washington Street. Um, and it was due to the fact that we don't have a stop sign there. It's only a two-way stop. And we're getting so much east-west traffic because of the 11th Street closure, which just makes sense to make that a four-way stop temporarily. And possibly when this project is over, revisit the possibility of making that a four, uh, permanent four-way stop. Thank you for that. Is there any public comment? Board comment? None here, Madam Chair. Motion? I'll make a motion. We approve the temporary and permanent four way stop. Support. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. The next item on the agenda is a request for street closure. Eric Camel, St. Joseph Young Men's Society, is requesting street closure at Tillerson Street from Franklin to Fulton Streets for their annual 2022. St. Joseph Festival on June 24th through 26th from 12 p.m. to midnight. Anyone here to address this? Captain, you're familiar with this. We do this every year. Yes, this is an annual request. We've never had any problems with, with it. We would recommend approval. Are there any public comments, board comments? None here. Oh, I make a motion we approve. Support. We're going to call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is Terry Greetham, Special Event Director, is requesting approval of the 2022 Farmers Market Agreements between the City of Michigan City and the following vendors listed below. They are Grandpa's Farm, Vinici's uh, Farms, Bruno's, G's Farmer's Market, Burrick's Farm, Nancy uh, Nature Cove. Why don't you go ahead and explain this? Uh, good morning, Terry Greetham, Michigan City Special Events. Uh, so these are all returning vendors. All of the vendors uh, listed here are returning vendors for the Farmer's Market with the exception of Nancy's Treasure Trove. Nancy Novak is a new vendor. Uh, so we are very excited to have her on board. Uh, all of the contracts have been reviewed and approved by Amber, and all of the certificates of insurance have been reviewed and approved by Charlie Kane of General Insurance. Thank you very much. Are there any uh, public comments, board comments? Then here. I make a motion we approve the vendors for the farmer's market. Support. Now call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is another vendor agreement. Terry Greetham, Special Event Director, is requesting the approval of a food vendor agreement in the amount of $200 that the vendor will pay to the city for a 10 by 25 space between the City of Michigan City and Brisket Biscuits Barbecue at the Singing Sands Sculpting Festival being held on June 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2022. Yes, so this is uh, uh, our second food vendor lined up for the event. Uh, we have a couple more that we're hoping to get. Uh, very excited to have them. Uh, again, the contract's been reviewed and approved by Amber, and the COI has been reviewed and approved by Charlie Keene of General Insurance. Thank you. Are there any public comments, board comments? Uh, just one question for Mr. Greetham. Will the hours of operation of brisket, biscuit, be outside of the hours of operation of Sunset Grill? No. The, uh, the, uh, 
the hours of operation will be during the festival hours, which will be uh, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday and 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Sunday. Motion to approve. I'll second. Aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is entertainment service agreement. Terry Gleason, special event director, is requesting an entertainment agreement for the 2022 farmers market season between the city of Michigan City and Neil Alsi in the amount of $150 per week and will not exceed $1,950. Yes. So, um, in the past, the uh, farmer's market has had live entertainment. This is an acoustic guitar player. Obviously, it helps with the atmosphere. It helps people keep it down there and, and they keep shopping. Uh, we have had a past agreement uh, with this person. Uh, this contract has been reviewed and approved by Amber as well as, uh, uh, and so basically this uh, entertainer will alternate every other week of the farmer's market. Uh, any public comments? Board comments. None here. I make a motion we approve. Support. Aye. Aye. I would suggest everyone come down to the farmer's market and listen to the music. Very relaxing experience. Next item on the agenda, <coughs> agenda is uh, entertainment service agreement. Terry Greetham, Special Event Director, is requesting an entertainment agreement for the 2022 Farmers Market season between the City of Michigan City and George Pelwitz in the amount of $150 per week, not to exceed $1,950. Yes, so this is our second entertainer. Um, this entertainer has worked uh, at the Farmers Market in the past, um, but instead of having the same person for 26 weeks, we thought we'd break it up. So every, he will... Uh, perform on the weeks that the previous entertainer does not. Are there any public comments? Any board comments? Thank you. Make a motion we approve. Support. Call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is the payroll dockets. Uh, the first one being uh, April 22nd, 2022, city payroll of $627,452.47 and April 29, 2022 uh, payroll docket uh, city pension of $211,571.27. Make a motion to approve for the amounts as stated. Second. Call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next is the claims docket for May 2nd, 2022. Municipal claims of $921,885.55. CDBG of zero health and life insurance fund, $446,709.58. Workers comp trust, $15,716.15 for a total claims of $1,000,000. $384,311.28. Make a motion to approve the claims docket in the amount of $1,384,311.28. Second. The next is the pending items on finished business list. We have a number of items that need status. The first that needs status is the request from Northern Indiana Computer, Commuter uh, Transportation District to purchase two parcels of land for $550. There's the status on this. Do you have anything for us today, Amber? I'm sorry, which one are you on? This is the purchase of the property by Nick Day. 550. It was tabled because of the easement for sanitary. So I don't have the minutes in front of me, but I, I thought from the minutes the board approved this. No, I thought we tabled. I thought we tabled it. Yeah. Yeah. We tabled. Yeah, we had to table it because uh, there was a problem with the easement having been prepared. So let me get with Connor Nolan because how it, I remember it, I thought the board approved it. Um, so. 
I can't give you an answer right now. Thanks. <laughs> I was waiting to look at the minutes to go over them. Um, <laughs> like I said, in my mind, I remember Never Connor finished. Nolan being on the phone as well and saying, do we have any objection to this being done? So I'll make a motion we table to our next meeting. Second. Okay, then call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Hi. Mr. Vincent. Hi. Chair Wilson as well. On the next item is Carrie McGinty, 225 Charles Street, requesting purchase of property owned by the City of Michigan City, located behind their property at 932 West 6th Street. And um, this, we chose option uh, number one under Indiana Code 36-1-11-5.9 that allows the purchase uh, to be offered to a budding land over its owners. Has anything transpired on this one? So I've been working with Sue Downs, um, who's been trying to get a hold of real estate to try to find a legal description on this. Um, we've had no luck so far. Uh, let me try one more meeting, or I'm gonna have to come back to the board and ask to hire a surveyor so that we can get a legal description. And this will remain on our pending items list. The next item on the agenda is Mason Riffin, Northwest Indiana Lawn Care, doing business as Weed Man Lawn Care. Uh, he was requesting a, uh, a, we were waiting for a certificate of insurance. What he had uh, sent us was incorrect. Has that been taken care of yet? So I've sent multiple emails. I've had no response from them. Um, so I, I would recommend denial of this at this point in time. Then, based on that, do have a motion? I make a motion we deny this request and remove from the unfinished business list. Okay. Support. And then I'll call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair Rosai as well. The next item on the agenda is the uh, matter concerning the uh, in dot markers or to this board by uh, Councilman Don Presbolinski. Um, this was carried over. Our uh, previous city engineer was going to contact INDOT regarding this matter to find out when this is going to be achieved. I don't see the Jeffers here. I think we're just going to have to leave this on here. I agree. Okay, we'll leave this on. Uh, oh, Madam Chair, yes. should we reassign? instead of the former engineer to either hand this over to the street department or, or our, our new Mr. Minnick. Mr. Minnick, would you be kind enough to address this? Sure, I'll look into it. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is Tommy Kalavik, 1316 Ohio Street, requesting a three-way stop sign at the intersection of Wabash and Ann Streets be removed. And this was uh, to be revisited today. Um, there was a concern about the site development and, and wanted, we wanted to hold off on this until that was finished. Do we have anyone to address it? So we put this on the pending list because we weren't sure what the development was gonna look like when uh, St. Anthony Hospital was uh, done with their uh, reinvestment in that property. However, the last time I talked to uh, Mr. York, he still has no uh, concrete plans on what's gonna happen with that property. Whatever does happen, it doesn't appear there's ever gonna be a cross street to go completely through that intersection because there's still a significant portion of the building remaining. Um, so at this point, it seems like we might wanna investigate possibly moving the stop sign one block north uh, to where it was suggested by Councilman Paul Presbolinski. I think maybe even Mr. Klavik suggested it too. Uh, I pulled the accident stats for the intersection that's just north of, north of there, which would be Wabash and um, Ripley Street. In the last, I believe, seven years, we've had eight accidents. Uh, six of those accidents were caused by east-west traffic failing to the right of way to the two east and westbound stop signs that are already there. So I believe there is uh, some support for that four-way stop at that intersection. There's also uh, some site obstructions. There's a fence that's located at the north east corner of that intersection that partially blocks the view of north and southbound traffic. So it would be the board's pleasure because uh, it wasn't officially recommended, but uh, I think it would be a, a good case where we could move that stop sign one block north to Ripley. And... Okay, that's what I wanted to know. All right, um, any public comment? Board comment. 
Uh, Madam Chair, I did see some activity at that site on the way into work this morning. So apparently Franciscan is doing something, but I think it's going to be a long time before it's clear to us what's going to be there. So I would make a motion that we approve the captain's recommendation of, of moving stop, installing stop signs at Ripley and Wabash. I'll second that. It, was that the right location, Captain? Yes, we will remove the stop, the three-way stop that's already at the intersection of Wabash and Street. And Yes, and we will make the intersection of Ripley and Wabash a four-way stop. That's my motion. Okay. Then I'll call for the vote. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. And lastly, we have the matter of the uh, uh, Tilden Avenue and Ohio Street crossings that was brought before this board by Councilman Don Preskolinski. Do we have a status on this? Yes, we do, Madam Chair. Uh, I have just before the meeting uh, had an updated conversation with uh, <clears throat> U.S. Senator Braun's office, uh, elevated it to that to that level, and uh, we have uh, established communication at the highest levels of CSX. But in in the meantime, um, um, I. I have a negotiated amount with CSX to repair those two crossings. All they need is the go-ahead from Michigan City. So there's a lot of conversation uh, between um, primarily Mr. Przblinski and myself because the law says that the railroads are required to repair their crossings at their cost. <clears throat> Excuse me, but to resurrect a little history previous administration tried to travel that path at no cost on the Franklin Street crossing. It took several months. And when the Michigan, when Michigan City finally stepped forward, uh, putting approximately around up $80,000 on the table, um, then it was done. And as long as we have a little skin in the game, so to speak, we can, we have some say so on when it gets done and what the installation is. The negotiated amount that, that uh, I'm sitting at right now is just under 90,000 for both crossings. So I'm willing to appropriate the money. Uh, I believe I have a sponsor with the council. I'm gonna move forward on this to appropriate the money and, and hopefully get those, get those crossings Thank fixed. You. That's good news. Um, we'll just go ahead and leave this on the- Yes, the yes, course. thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment. And we have uh, several people here. Yep. Uh, Tommy, go ahead. This is Tommy Kolovic from 1316 Ohio Street. Now, yesterday was May 1st, and um, the Summer Song ice cream truck is already back on the streets. I really have going, kind of going back to Mr. Landtrou. You know, he's, he's a guy who always plays by the rules. I call the, I really wonder if they have a mobile vendor license. I know they're based out of South Bend. They're right on Highway 2, right before you get to the bypass. We go over that all the time for our kids' away games and sporting events at University of Notre Dame and whatnot. They probably got about 100 trucks there. Um, they go through my neighborhood about six times a day with their chime. Ding, 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 about 100, 200 refrains a day. Um, I just feel that if you're, they're not ponying up like everybody else is, that, 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 that we need, really need to look into that. Thank you. I will pursue that okay. through code compliance. And we'll, if they're not permitted, we'll lower the boom on them. Thank you. The next item on uh, the uh, under public comment is uh, Walsh Kurzag is requesting permanent closure of Carlin Court. Donnelly Street, Clare Street, off of uh, 10th Street on May 3rd. Is there anyone here to address this? Go ahead, Ad identify yourself, please, Kevin. These are the public comment too. Mm -hmm. These two
No, I'll go ahead with uh, the next the next week, Terry. Yes, uh, Terry Greetham, uh, Michigan City Special Events, long time no see. Okay, um, request, let me read your request. Yes. Request uh, approval of a contract between the City of Michigan City and the Michigan City Port Authority as a silver level sponsor for Singing Sands Sand Sculpting Festival in the amount of $2,000, a gold level Venetian night uh, sponsorship in the amount of $500 and a several silver level sponsorship of the Michigan City Oktoberfest in the amount of $1,000. Why don't you go ahead? Yes, so um, we're very excited to add the Port Authority as, as one of our partners for uh, our events. They are our first, uh, I'm sorry, our second multi-event partner. Um, if you'd like, if you, if you want the details, I can go through each one as far as what the sponsorships levels are. Yeah. Okay. Okay, is there any public comment? Any board comment? Make a motion we approve sponsorship. Support. A call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. The next item, uh, Terry, is uh, requesting approval of a contract between the city of Richmond City and Jack and Rhonda Haverstock as a farmer's market vendor for 2022. There's also a note in here that their certificate of Insurance will expire on May 10th and will be updated and must be received prior to May 14th. Yes, so this is um, uh, a returning vendor. Uh, they got the stuff back to us a little bit late, so I apologize for the, the late notice on this. Uh, but I have spoken with the market manager, Ms. Bagley, and she has informed them that their uh, certificate insurance will be good for this weekend, but they will need a new certificate before they come back on the 14th. Is there any public comment? No, I make a motion we uh, approve support. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry? Aye. Mr. Vincent? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. I would like to just remind everybody that the farmer's market does open this Saturday, uh, May 7th at 9 a.m. for our first market. So everybody come down. We have, uh, I believe this year we'll have 13 vendors, which is uh, should be a nice market. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I may, there was one item on the unfinished, the very last page, that uh, Clerk Malib just pointed out to me that we overlooked. Hey, folks, can you guys hear me now? Yes. I'm sorry about that. I was trying to get, I just rejoined the meeting. This is Kevin with Walsh Herlog. Why don't you go ahead and explain what you're asking, Kevin? So part of the double track, Nick D, um, double track one job, there are three closures along 10th that permanently get closed and they get two of them get rerouted as loop streets and one of them get rerouted as a cul-de-sac. So the request is starting tomorrow, we'd like to just go ahead and permanently close those to reconstruct them back to the two loop roads and also the one cul-de-sac. And it's Claire, Donnelly and Carlton along 10th Street. Thank you. Is there any uh, public comments? Any board comments? I'm a little bit concerned about traffic in that area. Uh, are the people going to have ways to? Yeah, get... you just all they do instead of going the going down to 10th Street, they just go out the back part of those uh, those areas. That's all you do is you just go the opposite direction. There's there's full access to get through. I drove it the other day to double check. There's full access to get from south to north and north to south. Yes. Captain, have you looked at this? I apologize that I was not in the loop on this one, so I can't give an answer. Thank you. Is it critical that we approve this this week or could we do it in two more weeks? Um, it, it would be preferable if there was a way to do it today. We just, we, we put the type threes out there to preset everything to get ready for these closures because we've got some boards and different things that go through those intersections. So we're, we're trying to schedule the utility sub later this week to go ahead and start those. Okay. 
So that will go. Motion to approve. Second. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Um, I've been informed that I uh, neglected to bring one of the uh, items on unfinished business list uh, forward, and that is Breland Hervey Social uh, Q Barbecue and Catering Mobile Truck, uh, located at 621 Franklin Street. We've been carrying this over because we've been waiting for information regarding dates and hours of operation from uh, Mr. Hervey, and we have. Uh, have we gotten anything from him? Okay. And what is the board's pleasure? Motion to remove this from the list. I'll second. I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair Wilson as well. We're at the end of the road here, folks. So I'll call <laughs> for a motion to adjourn. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. Aye. <laughs> Are there any board comments? Go ahead. Madam Chair, I just had a, a few reminders. I don't see in the audience folks that may be able to answer these, but we talked, we talked last time about alternate detours and what are we going to do? It's a when, not if. The Franklin Street Bridge is not operable during this summer, during some of our events. And uh, just wanted to, to just reiterate concerns that I have personally, and, and, and I'm sure special events would also be concerned. Um, also, I noticed some guardrails on Carwick Road that have been damaged. Looks like they've been damaged for quite some time. I didn't know if we missed a construction season last year to repair those, or if the street department has those on one of their work order lists. I just was hoping we'd see street department here today. I do not. Another, oh, sorry, Mayor. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, another, um, from last week, we talked about uh, family wanted to purchase some property on Nahas Street because of the littering and the loitering and the shortcuts through their yard. And planning department was going to go with street department and check that out to see if there was something we could do as a city, either to clean it up or close that makeshift alleyway for them. I, I didn't know if we had an update on that. No, we don't. We also have to go through due process on that to sell that. So I, I would say- No, I, I understand it and our, we denied it, but one of our, our questions was in planning department did say they were gonna go down and visit that and see if there was something we could do from the city, at least to help out the concerns of the neighborhood. My motion is to put all three of the items Mr. Vincent brought forward on our uh, to-do list, pending list. A second. Okay. Call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Anything else? None here, Madam Chair. I just want to mention on behalf of the clerk's office that there is a problem with receiving uh, uh, submittals in a timely manner and ask that everyone uh, submit on time. I really would appreciate it. I know um, we have a lot of uh, projects going on, especially with the double tracking and people wanting street closures, but it would help my staff plus this board uh, be able to move forward on items they didn't get to see till Monday morning. Thank you. Thank you. Brad. Good morning again, Brad Mack, Premier Engineers. Uh, regarding the potential Franklin Street closure, and the associated work with that, I talked to uh, Marquis Electric, um, I think the day after our last meeting, and that all that work's been completed. They did a substantial amount of work over the winter months, and they don't have any expectation for resuming that. They've got all their work, uh, their scope work completed. So uh, hopefully that alleviates some concerns. Um, my concern is now what we've already done. I'm sure that's all good project, but hundred year old bridge, something else. Yeah. Uh, if something does go wrong. Yeah, you know how mechanical and electrical issues are. They, uh, at the least convenient time is when they want to appear. Understood. And now what they call Murphy's Law. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.
Do I hear a second? Second. Second. We'll call for the vote. Mayor Pear. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you.